Hi everybody, welcome back to the Sailrite Workbench. I'm Daniel, today we're gonna show you a project that I'm very excited about, and that's how to make your own sci-fi inspired space cowboy smuggler belt. Yeah, we'll go with that. This holster is inspired by a fictional character's holster, and hopefully you can use it to make inspiration for your own projects. For our materials, we're gonna use a five to six ounce vegetable tan leather. Now, real holsters are typically made from much thicker leather, something like an eight to nine ounce, but because this is meant as a prop piece for a costume, we want something a little bit lighter and easier to work with. For our hardware, we'll use rivets and snaps. We'll sew this project on the Sailrite Leatherwork sewing machine with the smooth foot set. A leather needle and Tex-90 nylon thread in the color of walnut. We'll also need some other tools that we have here. We've linked all the tools and materials in the description below. The products we'll use on our leather are Phoebe's leather dye in light brown, Neat's foot oil, gum track acanth, leather salve, and resiline. Our first step is to print and cut out our template. Now we have this great free template available for you to download and cut out yourself. We'll tape our template pieces together using the labels and matching line patterns. Then check that it fits our prop. For our project, we actually took a fake gun that's designed to teach firearm safety and we painted it. We also added some pieces from our local hardware store and some 3D printed parts as well. After we test fitted our blaster to our paper template, now we can move on to make sure the 3D parts fit as well. Along with the free pattern template, we also have free files to print the 3D pieces of the belt and holster. You can find those in the description below. Now, if you don't have your 3D printer of your own, you can check with your local library or community center to see if they have one for public use. Once the 3D pieces are done, make sure your 3D printed parts and template will match up to each other. You should be able to move the legs of the thigh piece freely through holster clip A and B. If your 3D printed pieces don't match up with the pattern, you may have to adjust your printer settings and reprint your pattern template. Now, once you've done that, we can move on to working with the leather. For this next step, we'll use our strop to sharpen all of our tools. Then, trace the template onto our leather using a scratch awl. We use a nice sharp pair of leather scissors to cut the pieces out. Now, there are a few pieces that are included in the pattern because they're up to your size preferences. These are the belt pieces, the leg strap, and the holster strap to keep the blaster in place. We will cut all these pieces with our leather strap cutter because it is the easiest way to get straight and even strips of leather. The belt will be two straps that will go around the waist and it will be one and seven eighths inches wide by the length that you'd prefer. My personal measurements will create two pieces that are 21 inches long. We will also cut out the leg strap, which is one inch by 24 inches and the holster strap, which is one inch by 10 inches. These are the measurements we used, but they won't be a one size fits all. Be sure to take your own hip, thigh, and blaster measurement. So we actually forgot a step, so we're including it now for you. When you go to cut your straps out before you die and everything like that, you wanna take both ends of the thigh strap and one end of the holster strap, and you wanna cut them rounded. Find something kind of small and round. You can use a coin, you can use, in this case, we're using one of our press and snap dies. Uh, anything that's small and round that fits in here that lets you make that perfect circle or half circle. Since we forgot this step and didn't catch it until later in the video, you might see these edges not rounded. When we realized, we quickly fixed them and added this step where it should go in the video. So ignore the square edges on these pieces, they should be round. With all of our pieces cut out, the next step is to treat and prep our leather. To start off, we'll use Neat's Foot Oil, which will help soften the leather to make it easier to work with. After we've applied the oil and let that dry, we'll sand all of our edges flat in case we cut any at a slight angle. Now, we'll bevel the edges with a number one bevel, being sure to get both sides of the leather. We can skip beveling the ends of the each strap and the thigh piece because they'll be hidden behind our 3D printed parts. Now we will begin dyeing the leather. We went with Feebing's light brown leather dye. 
To dye our leather, we're going to use a small block of foam and applying the dye in circular motions first to get good coverage, then straight lines to make the second coat. We'll then use a wool dauber for the back side, or the flesh side, because this side of the leather is rough and can cause the foam block to shred. We'll let these pieces completely dry before moving on to the next step. Now comes the part where we make the actual holster with a technique called wet molding. Before starting, we'll wrap our blaster in plastic wrap to help protect both it and the leather. Be sure to do this for whatever you're wet molding your leather to. Wet molding is a process that requires us to get the leather wet. We're going to use a container of water and dip our leather into it. We're going to get half of it wet and keep the other half dry. The leather should be completely soaked before we pull it out. We found that waiting until all the little air bubbles stop coming out of the leather is when it's completely soaked through. We'll pull the leather out and pat it dry to remove some of the excess water. Then we'll place the part of the leather that we dipped in the water around the prop to form it to our blaster, being sure to make it fit relatively tight. Then we'll clamp the leather together so it does not lose its shape. We advise using extra leather under the clamps to avoid leaving marks or impressions on your project leather. Then we'll let that set to the side and let it dry overnight. It's day two. We let our project wet mold and dry overnight and now we're ready to continue. We can remove the clamps on the holster and prep our pieces for the next step. We will use a leather salve to condition the leather even more. Next, we'll seal it all up with Resoline and protect it. First, we'll seal the edges by adding some gum drag and using the burnishing machine to burnish those edges as well. We'll do this to all the edges except where the holster comes together. We'll do that part later. We are now ready for stitching. First, we'll take the Sailrite wing divider and follow along the edges that we just burnished to create a line to follow for our decorative stitches. We have our wing divider set to three millimeters. For the hip slash thigh piece, you only need to go down part of the way, about to where the end tapers because that is as far as you will see when the holster is assembled. Once those are marked, we'll take the pieces over to the sewing machine. We will use a three millimeter stitch length to sew all the detail stitching into the edges of each piece. After our decorative stitches are created, we can start assembling the holster. First, we will sew the thigh strap, which is the longer of the two straps, on the back of the holster down toward where the muzzle of the blaster would be. You want this piece positioned with 12 inches sticking out from the folded edge an inch and a half from the bottom edge. Next, we will take the holster strap, the shorter of the two, and attach it to the hip slash thigh piece. This strap will keep the blaster in the holster. This strap will be positioned roughly one inch from the left side of the template and about two inches up from the start of the curve. In this step, we'll sew the finished sides facing each other. Lastly, we're going to sew the holster in place. Sew about five millimeters from the wet molded edge. Once all the pieces are sewn, you can take your thread burner and remove all the excess thread ends. Now we need to finish the edge of the holster. To do so, we'll sand the edges with our sander. Then we'll bevel and burnish them with gum drag. And to get the edge color to match the rest of the piece, we're also going to add some edge coat in the color mahogany, but this is an optional step. The final step in the process is to add our belt holes, snaps, and rivets. Use rivets to hold the belt hinges to the main belt, as well as when we fold the legs of the hip and thigh piece through the holster clip pieces.
Now, we will create three belt holes on each side of the belt that are a quarter inch in size and an inch and a half apart from each other. Then, we will attach our snaps to the thigh strap and the holster strap. For the thigh strap, we place the snaps about an inch and a half from each other on each side. To get this placement, we recommend test fitting it on your leg for these measurements. The last part of the assembly is to add some wire to the belt buckle piece. You can find wire for this at your local hardware store. Now we're going to assemble the belt. First, take the larger of the two belt buckles, take your two primary belt pieces, wrap those around the two wires that you have running through the actual buckle. Now we'll move on to the smaller of the two belt buckles. Take that smaller buckle and wrap your belt straps through the hoops and then press the holes down over the main peg in the center. This creates your belt and it gives you adjustment points so you can either increase or decrease the size. Now I'll move on to attaching the holster to the main belt. Take the clip that goes towards the front of the holster and attach it to the larger of the two buckles. Now take the smaller of the two clips and attach it to the back buckle. Next, you can attach the two snaps that go around the leg piece. Now you have yourself a great costume piece that fits the needs of any intergalactic smuggler. The nice thing about this design is you can use the technique you learned in this video and apply them to characters from other pieces of fictions to make their holsters as well. Again, we've listed all the tools and materials down in the description below. Subscribe to the channel for more leather crafting projects, and we'll see you guys next time.